Star Wars changed a lot of things. It changed the way we look at science fiction. It changed the way they do special effects. It changed the way films were released and marketed. And it definitely changed modern society as we know it. And I have some very fond memories of that film being released in 1977. Star Wars did change everything. Not just filmmaking, but it actually changed culture. Not just American culture, culture all over the planet. If you're a younger fan in your teens and 20s, and, and, and your 30s, I should say, your experience with the first Star Wars film, or any of the original trilogy, has always probably been on media, DVD, VHS, and most recently Blu-ray. If you were lucky enough, you probably got to see one of the theatrical re-releases or even maybe the special editions on the big screen. But you don't know what it was like back then when Star Wars Mania hit. It was just, it was something that nobody had ever seen before. When Star Wars hit, of course, every showing was sold out. I wasn't able to see it till maybe about three weeks out after it was released. Uh, and my mother had to take me to a late night showing. That's the only way we could get in. And once I saw the blockade runner and the Imperial Star Destroyer coming up from top of the screen, I knew that this was going to be something awesome. And it was. Younger fans who never saw the original film in the theaters back in the day really didn't really and i'm not trying to put you down but you just don't understand what an influence it had on the 70s particularly in terms of merchandising of course you had your typical t-shirts you had masks you had anything they could stick star wars on and make a buck they did it in terms of action figures kenner could not keep up with the supply and demand they couldn't do it you actually had to get some special card that reserved figures for you in order for you to get the action figure those of us who remember seeing it in the theaters back in the day, it changed us in terms of what we expected from science fiction back in those days. Now, something like Star Wars in today's cinema is pretty much commonplace because special effects have advanced so much. But I'm telling you, it's this film just touched people in a way that drove them nuts. Star Wars toys were flying off the shelves. And as a kid, one of the greatest things was the Sears Wish Book. And if you're my age, you remember that. And you would go around and you would automatically flip to the toy section and look at all the Star Wars toys. You would do it days upon days upon end, wanting everything you saw. And when you were done looking, you switched over to the underwear section and looked at that for a while. Admit it, you did it. Star Wars back in the 70s was something just incredibly special. And unfortunately for, for like 20 years, the only way you could see Star Wars on VHS was in standard 4x3 format, typical square television. The Death Star looked like a golf ball. And it wasn't until about the mid to late 90s when they finally released it on VHS in widescreen format. And this was before the special editions. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a whole lot of Star Wars stuff from that time period. The story for me is I used to live in Massachusetts and my father's company transferred him down here to Houston. And I had a big blue chest 
full of Star Wars toys. I pretty much almost had everything, including some Battlestar Galactica toys. We got halfway through New York, driving down. I look in the back of our van, and I said, and I asked, Dad, where's my toy chest? And he said he had to leave it behind because there wasn't enough room in the van. All those Star Wars toys, gone. There are only basically three things that I have original from Star Wars back in 1977. I have the story of Star Wars narrated by Roscoe Lee Brown on vinyl. Next up, I still have the large size Marvel Comics adaptations. The film is basically broken down into these two big huge issues. Now like I said, Star Wars was on VHS for many many years in 4x3 format. They released it in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s on widescreen VHS. I however have the laser disc in widescreen. This is not the special edition. This is this is the THX enhanced where they cleaned up the picture and the audio and everything. But this is you know this isn't the special edition laser disc. This is the actual original unaltered film on laser disc. Unfortunately my laser disc player uh, broke several years ago debating whether or not I want to get a new one. Going into episode 7 is, for a guy in my generation that saw the films in the theater back in the day, yeah, it's something special. But it's simply, can it be as good as the originals? And from everything I've heard so far, it is. But to experience the first Star Wars film that started all of this, and to see the 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 I don't want to say magic, but to see the incredible imprint that it has made in society firsthand back in the day is something that you really can't explain. It's something you have to experience. Star Wars, the original film, will always be my number one favorite film. I know George Lucas has done a lot with the special edition. But I think, you know, of course, he was doing that to up the special effects in the, in the original trilogy to kind of match par with the prequels. Uh, it's just, if you were around in 1977 and experienced all this, this was the greatest time to be a kid. You got to see Star Wars in the theater. And it was just an incredible experience.